Hello and a very warm welcome to the latest edition of This Racing Life. We are in the West Country this week as the jump season hits full flow and have visited three yards who are currently enjoying quite a purple patch. Here's what's coming up on this week's show. We just feel more settled this time round, breather over the summer, what worked, what didn't necessarily work as well, and made a few tweaks and changes. And But yeah, I mean, we're absolutely delighted with the facilities we've got here and um, we hope that it can sort of help propel us back to the level we were and, and on beyond again. We were trying to drive forward and you know, you're buying these young horses, a production line of nice young horses, but hopefully we'll attract one or two more new owners. If anybody comes here and sees Everton, I'd rather they think they don't like me, but I'm a good trainer than think I'm a lovely fellow but can't train. So it's important that we do a good job, but we try and give owners a great time as well. The, the hospice is, is, a, is a charity that we all try to support in this area. You know, if we don't know anybody who's been there, we know friends who, who've got relations that have been there, and uh, you know, we hope to raise some good funds for them. Obviously, uh, Herefordshire is blessed with a plethora of uh, jump trainers, top jump trainers, um, and given my sort of racing background, a few sort of telephone calls, and here we are, sort of a few months later, with the event actually happening, and uh, very excited to be here. First up on this week's show, we pay a visit to Harry and Kira Fry, who have recently located to an exciting new purpose-built facility in Higher Crockermore in Dorset. We're very lucky to be in our own purpose-built yard and um, it's a very exciting times. We've been here just over a year now and um, it was a big learning curve last year. Um, we, there was COVID, there was building the yard, moving into the yard, getting to low how it all worked, just yeah. even a day-to-day -day routine. And then obviously working out how to use best use the gallops, things like that. And we just feel more settled this time round, took a breather over the summer, what worked, what didn't necessarily work as well, and made a few tweaks and changes. And But yeah, I mean, we're absolutely delighted with the facilities we've got here. And um, we hope that it can sort of help propel us back to the level we were and, and on beyond again. And you actually moved some of your grasses and, and sands up from the actual places they were before. And, literally put them down here haven't they that's been quite a big effort to do yeah well i mean the outdoor school um we just literally picked up and and Amazing. moved and put it down here so yeah i mean it, it was quite a um yeah logistical nightmare but it was we got it done it was a lot of hard work from from everyone involved and obviously my wife kira it's a big team effort but and from a purely selfish point of view so COVID, the lockdown was good timing in terms of uh, it sounds ridiculous to say it, but in terms of just our focus was purely on this space, getting mm. ourselves moved, built and moved in. And um, so it's, yeah, it's taken a lot of work from, from a lot of people to, to get us up and running. And, and uh, we're, yeah, we're looking forward to what the future holds. Facilities, I have to say, from someone coming from a couple of different yards recently, these are top of the range stuff, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, we, I mean we've, everything has been built with the horses in mind, their welfare, their well-being, in order to try and get the, the very best out of each and every one. That's what it's all about at the end of the day. And uh, whether that's a midweek race or a Saturday weekend race, it's, we try and do the best by every single horse. And, and the whole idea, yeah, with the bar is that we wanted natural, well-ventilated, buildings that allow horses to thrive essentially so it's a good working environment for, for all the team as well you we can shut the doors in the middle of winter and it's blowing a gale yeah. being with rain and, and not get soaked from one stable to the next so it's I think I mean they, they seem I mean they're very hard working good happy uh, team of staff and and of course we can't do any of it without them so it's important and um, they, they buy into it and what we're trying to achieve and 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 that's what it's all about is to get the very best results on the, on the track. Yeah, and your team quite clearly work hard, but it's also very much a family affair, isn't it? Yeah. I love the fact that your aunt's just over the road, your sister's around eventing, yeah. your wife, Kira, plays a massive part as well. And of course, you've yeah. got the two kids and your house is on site now as well. Yeah. That must all add to the whole enjoyment aspect of it. Yeah, it is. And I mean, it's a way of life. It's, it's fantastic. The girls are, are grown up. This is all they've known. They've fitted in with our routine. I mean, it, yeah, Kira, I mean, it's, I wouldn't be doing this without her. It's it's very much uh, a team effort. I can't do any of it on my own, but but Kira is is integral to, to all of it. It's a pretty big feather in your cap that you managed to get a Grade One winner almost immediately after moving here last year with Metier. How important was that to last season for you? Well, I think hugely. I mean, that was the highlight of our season without doubt, and um, to come in new city and and win at the highest level. Um, is just well not only gives us confidence that what we've done what we've invested in 
um, is we're doing the right thing, but also give the owners, those looking at from the outside in, that although we've moved yards, we can still very much produce the goods. And, and to get that big winner, um, grade one win on the board within six months was fantastic. And hopefully it's the, the first of many more to come. And you're amazing, an exciting horse, isn't he, Matthew? We haven't seen him yet this season, but I imagine you're hoping he's going to take fairly high rank. Exactly. I mean, he's he's had one bad run over hurdles, um, and that was in the Supreme. And and there's yeah, there's no doubt my horses weren't right um, in the spring. And although he he seemed actually to be fine, there was uh, there was a problem post Cheltenham, but he's fully recovered now. And I mean, he was yeah, okay. You could pick holes in, in the form of the Tolworth, but you couldn't deny the manner he's done it. And he's only a five year old, and his best ground is in uh, best form has been in slow ground. And that's why we haven't seen him yet. We're yeah. just waiting for rain. So we're excited to see where he could end up. He's rated 144 at the moment. So he's got to go and sort of prove himself and, and earn the right to run in those better hurdles. But we're hoping he'll be up to it, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, yeah. Simple as that. With that poor run coming in the Supreme, would you be worried at all about returning to Cheltenham? No, I don't think so. I don't think it was a track at all. Okay. I think it was, um, no, I wouldn't be. Uh, that way inclined, not 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 one bit. I mean, the key for him is is sort of slow underground conditions, basically. Let's talk about Ask Me Early, who's a horse yeah. that's just got stamina written all over him. He reminds me a little bit of Grey Abbey, a horse who was around I think, about 10, 15 years ago, who just kept on galloping, never yeah. really seemed to... Well, five, six miles wasn't enough for him. And he looks the kind of same vein, doesn't he? Welsh National could easily be on the horizon for him. Yeah, and, that, and that's very much been our target um, for, the, for this season, or well, the first part of the season anyway. And um, it was great to see him come out and win over hurdles at, at Exeter on his reappearance. That was definitely a bonus because, I mean, he is a proper chaser. And it was only 2-5 that day. And Sean gave him a lovely ride. And he just, it was purely get his season started. And he snuck up the inside rail. And it just really showed... The, the, the quality of the horse really that and and the will to win um he's just he's a talented individual and although you wouldn't know that to see him at home he's certainly not going to set any speed records uh, <laughs> up our gallop but he gallops and he jumps and he showed that over fences last year and we're excited to see um where he goes in those yeah the, we think obviously the national trips are, are, are tailor-made for him he's a winner two-time winner around chepstow already and we're hoping to take him back there for the Welsh National Trial. Um, and then obviously all being well, back for the for the main event, the Welsh National just after Christmas. We know you've landed plenty of Punchestown plunder in the past and one that has done that last year was Pure Bliss. And she's a pretty exciting contender when she takes defences, isn't she? Absolutely, we were delighted to, to yeah, get an, another winner over at, at Punchestown. It's been a, a very lucky meeting for us. and. Um, she she did nothing wrong last season. She had, she was won three of her four starts, and again she's another one that we've just been waiting for for conditions to get get her started. And I mean it's frustrating because the program book is there. There's you've got good. I mean we're now getting listed mares, novice chases, and but we haven't been able to get a run into her yet. We haven't been able to get that experience first and foremost. So it's been yeah just hard to try and get that with with conditions as it has been. Um, find the the right races to get them started in but she's in good form and as you said I mean we she's always looked like a chaser she's mm. a big strong mare and we're hopeful that she can go on to, to bigger and better things over over the bigger obstacles definitely and her white blaze is quite noticeable on the gallops but also was the fact that she worked so well as well yeah she I mean she's she we knew in the spring that she'd improved again prior to going to punch down um, I mean obviously you don't go to Ireland unless you think you're going to be competitive. We don't really go anywhere unless sure. you think it'll be good, but certainly not across the Irish Sea. <laughs> but, um, so we were hopeful of a good run that day and, and she seems to have continued that sort of progression this autumn and obviously we've got to see it on the race course and um, schooling's been going well but we, we need to see her go and translate that on, onto the track and, and um, hopefully, yeah, as I said, she can build and progress as, as the season unfolds. And unsurprisingly in the yard of this calibre there's plenty to look out for elsewhere in the yard the likes of Phoenix Way, Master Debonair. Is there any other horse or horses in particular you think we should be looking out for this season? I think uh, Rioja, um, he ran, uh, made his debut for us at Aintree uh, and again what is 
traditionally quite a strong maiden hurdle. Uh, the form for that race has, has been franked as well with the winner finishing runner up in a grade two and, and the third horse winning at Ascot last weekend. So, um, but he's probably more a horse for, for next year. I think we'll, we'll, we'll have some fun over hurdles this season, I'm sure, but um, I think he'll make a lovely chaser um, next season, that's for certain. Excellent stuff. And obviously with the new beginnings here, some of the new horses coming through, it's a very exciting time that could easily turn into a brilliant season and for future seasons as well, couldn't it? Well, absolutely. I mean, that's what we're, we're hoping to do is um, to, yeah, very much. It's all the emphasis, I mean, you picked, pointed out, it's about the young horses coming through. And last year we, set, we sort of gave ourselves a building block to build on and um, a base to build from. And, and hopefully, yeah, we can go on to, to bigger and better things. And um, it's, as I keep saying, exciting time. Yeah, and hopefully the next couple of weeks there'll be some rain in the air to give us a proper green grass of home as well. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Another trainer who's been in flying form of late is Milton Harris, whose recent successes have included Knight Salute, who landed the Triumph Hurdle Trial at the November meeting at Cheltenham. If we can just talk a little bit about your hiatus from the game, because obviously yeah. you started your career in Fantastic Fettle yeah. and were carrying on that way before you stopped. How hard was it in that period that you had off? Well, look, there's not, not going to hide in behind bushes here, is there? So there's a bit of a... My licence wasn't renewed. And I fought for that for, I think, eight years, something like eight years. And that, and I'd be a strong character, but that knocked me about, you know, that knocks you about. You, you lose a lot of things, somebody I cared dearly for, my home, money, not that that's important to me. Um, but, you, I, I don't know, credibility within the sport, if you like. Um, and, and then, of course, there's things written, some which, which were true, some weren't true. Um, but that's one day for a book, maybe down the road. Mm -hmm. um, but... When I came back, the first, you nearly feel a little bit embarrassed because you're not sure the industry will accept you. But Dan Scout and particularly Paul Nichols, people I know, I wouldn't say my peers, but Paul's champion trainer many times, that meant a lot to me that they, they encouraged and welcomed me with open arms. Paul walked straight up to me my first day, he saw me at the races and said welcome back. And that was important to me. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, the owners that you've managed to stick by you, they've, they've, done, they've done a great job. Extraordinary. Well, yeah. Never left. Even when we had horses elsewhere, I managed them for them and devised them and tried to got involved. I was never warned off. I just, they didn't renew my licence. And, and so it was a long road. And then, of course, you, you, you worry you're never going to come back. And it's, you've seen me this morning, it, you know, this is what I love to do. I think a lot of people would say it takes great strength of character to come back from something like that and to now be performing at such a high level in such a short period of time. Some might say stubbornness, might they? Well, they would, yeah. Yeah, so, so that's in me. I've got, I'm a competitive man, you know, don't ever kid yourself about that. So that's me, I think. I think I'm a, I've spent my life fighting and sometimes I think I'd like to stop fighting, but the other half of me thinks that's the only way to go forward, you know? And as you said earlier on, it's a seven-day-a-week job. Yeah, it's a life. And you, you live and breathe it, don't you? Yeah, I'm just a figurehead, I suppose, or whatever, but we, this is a team effort. Massive owners, horses, people. And so, um, yeah, I, I live it. And, um, yeah, my life is pretty simple, isn't it, in a way? We, we've driven forward. We have a few pints at night. And, and, um, and, and life is, you know, it's OK at the minute. And you've got some pretty breathtaking facilities here as well, particularly on a sunny winter morning like we had this morning. First thing we've cleared, you know, first thing was wonderful, wasn't <laughs> it? It was, wasn't it? Um, but yeah. I'm, how did you kind of acquire this place? Because it is a very special place well, to I, be. I think this... <laughs> we sort of met... This was empty for three or four years. I think there was a dispute. I think maybe Harry Finley was involved and there was the guy that owns Brighton Hove Football Club, I think initially at the very end was the owner and the, the current landlord, Mr. Mrs. Phillips, they bought it. Unfortunately for me, they're, they're, they're not racing people and, and, and I wish they were because obviously if the landlord's interested in it as well, it, it, it makes the whole thing um, a little smoother. But look, we've got a new gallop. We've got good facilities. Um, we're still improving all the time. We, we but. We, it, the results are showing that we can make it work as it is, but we're trying to improve all the time. And your strike rate now is around about 25%. That's really going the right way. Well, that pleases it? me because I think that if you've got good novices, your strike rate gets inflated, doesn't it? We don't have many good novices, and a lot of our winners are handicaps. Mm -hmm. So I'm pleased that we're placing them in the right races and seem to be doing the right thing. That strike rate, I can't, I'm sure, will drop a little bit because we, we'll, the, the well handicapped horses will no longer be well handicapped. Sure. But as you commented earlier, though, probably the last. Two days we've had four runners, a winner, two seconds and a third, and I'm convinced at least one of those seconds should have won, um, and maybe another, but there you are, that's racing. Well, what I love about this yard as well is that your quite mammoth sense of humour is quite clearly on show all the time, everyone's having a great time, and you've had a pretty eclectic life yourself as well, haven't you, yeah. growing up and being on cruise ships and that kind of thing. Life, isn't it? Life, we've lived a life a bit, so 
the trouble is the world gets sanitised and you need humour. We mm -hmm. have humour. We have bad days, we have dark days, everybody has a dark day. But if we have somebody having a dark day, we try and grab, grab hold of them and we're in it together. If somebody doesn't turn up for work, somebody else has got to do their work. Sure. So our, 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 our attendance record is fantastic. I, I can't think of anybody who's had a day off for the last year. So I'm sure there's the odd day, that look, we're going to have a Christmas party, they'll have a hangover some of the next morning, <laughs> but they'll be at work. Yeah. Well, hard work breeds success, and that is starting yeah. to show, and you've got some fine horses at the moment, and yeah. what I'd like to touch on first is Knight Salute, yeah. who is three from three over hurdles, and obviously last won that grade two at Cheltenham. Yeah. He's pretty exciting, isn't he? Well, you saw him jump this morning. I did, very impressively the, 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 as well. There isn't any uh, logic to how this sort of works. Mark Adams, uh, who's one of the owners with his father and a good friend of, the, of them, owns a couple of pubs, They've got the four candles, which are you know, obviously related to the two runners. Yes. And we bought three. In fact, they were going to buy two, and I convinced them to buy three, and I charged them two and a half training fees for the three, so to try to encourage them. And Mark's had a lot of success with me in the last year or two. And we bought him, and he wasn't expensive, he was 14,000 guineas. And we took a bit of a chance because his form, he was well-bred, and he looked like he won in middle distance. Andrew Bolden was very straightforward about him in terms of information. I took him to Sedgefield first time because I felt like he'd, he'd, he had a mark of 91 as a two-year-old, which is no easy task, and I thought he'd go a mile and a quarter as a three-year-old, no problem. And then he, he, he basically finished last in three races, but I think he was fifth of five, sixth of six, seventh of seventh, but never beaten that far, a bit keen. So I took him to Sedgefield, I don't believe the price him actually, I think he went off about 18 to one or something ridiculous, to give him some confidence, and he won nicely. And then we went to Kempton, and I thought we could win the race, you know, because he's got plenty of toe, and he beat the nice horse in Nicky's, and... And when we went to Cheltenham, I was convinced we'd win if we got to the last with them, because he has a lot of toe. He's mm. got pace. And he's pretty professional, everything he does. And he's improved again since then. Look, he reminds me, albeit a, uh, let's get, not get carried away, but a catch it type mm. character. And if you ask Alan, I'm sure he, did, he didn't think he would win the tri <laughs> champion hurdle. <laughs> Once he won the first couple, I think he won at market raise in early doors or whatever. Sure. Do I think this is going to win triumph? Probably not. But I think he's that type of character. Hardy, yep. gets the job done, eats, sleeps works, does his job. One horse that I saw rather a large glint in your eye when talking about him is a horse you don't know a huge amount yet, just two stars, but has won one of those and that's Legionnaire. Good horse. Mm. All needs to be said. <laughs> <laughs> we dream at this job, don't we? Sure. I'm no different to anybody else. You, you know, I'm like the punter in the betting shop. I'm looking, we, we want to see a good horse. I was a bit no not annoyed, he, he should have finished second, but the horse that beat me at Huntington the first time is probably a flat horse, Archie Watson's horse. Actually got beat the other day, but oh, yeah. I suspect we'll see it on the flat. Yeah. Well, it, I think he was a blue... It was a slightly shorter trip as well, Mar wasn't five. it? Mark yeah. five. And I thought we'd win at, uh, Hunt at um, Aintree. I think, you've seen him, I don't know if you saw him, he'll bite you, kick you, <laughs> he wants to... F I like that, I, that's a bit yeah. like me, you know, you're just he's a competitor. <laughs> so, I think he's good. He jumps lovely as well. Um, the idea is to go and, on New Year's Day to Cheltenham, if we get there, um, and subject to how that went, because if he won that, we might consider staying in a bumper for the Aintree or possibly Cheltenham bumper, but they're hard to win, obviously. But at least we like to make a decision after that, because we could go juvenile and hurdling for the rest of the season, because um, he's, he's pretty talented. One thing that we did all notice about you is that you're very methodical in your planning. There's always some kind of layout for a horse, whoever, I, whoever it may be. That's why I don't sleep at night, isn't it? <laughs> so... so uh, the mind works, isn't it? So, I'm certainly not an academic, but I understand the racing program book, and and I like to think I know how to place a horse. So I'm always thinking about if this doesn't go, how can I go there? And so yeah, we, you have to think about it. You can't. I, there's a bit of racing that's trying to be too sanitised, and I think we're all different. Mm -hmm. Some people, you know, is is Sir Mark does Sir Mark Prescott have a plan for his two-year-olds that going to run over a mile and a half? Yeah. If you can't read into that, you shouldn't be doing it. When you're talking about new owners coming along, one of that's coming on board is Midland Park once again. I'm delighted with that. And we've got to talk a little bit about Sam Moritz because I know you love success there. You're a big fan of the place and yeah. you want to go back out there again, don't you? Well, look, two things there. Midland Park came to me and unfortunately things went wrong in my life and training fees, uh, training uh, license and things. They rang me on the Sunday night, I, I, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, whatever it was. And it, it was so, I got a phone and my phone came at Midland Park and I, and I hadn't spoken to them for eight years. No, and I, and I was so pleased that they, and they just basically said, well done lady, we'd like to have a horse for you. And that meant a lot to me because mm. they're a big owner, but they're not, they're a big owner for everybody. You can be a, you can be a, a tweed jacket chap in there, or you can be a chap from the city. You know, they, they have a broad spectrum of people and the boys that run it, you can't but be impressed. I mean, mm. I think the main man was a school teacher, and, but they've <laughs> done tremendously well, haven't they? It's an extraordinary operation. I think they've got 130 in training. Yeah. They run a good ship and... I offered them a few horses. I, I actually ran one for them in the listed bumper as a gesture of goodwill at um, finish sixth or seventh at Cheltenham. But the horse they bought, I bought specifically to go to Sam Ritz. 
and they liked that idea. So, again, you saw him work this morning, he worked well. Um, he uh, we went over hurdles. The sandwich thing, it takes a bit of knowing. I've been going a long time with my great friend Christian van der Eck. You have to have no penalties, basically. And he has no penalties from the flat. So he's a massive player there. I'd be disappointed if I didn't win. Now, we can't test the snow, can we? We just, we just don't know how we'll go on the snow. But I, he's the right... Everything about him, profile, is perfect. How do you prepare for that kind of surface? Is, is it pretty much impossible? Impossible. So Christian van der Eck, we, we run horses occasionally in the skiering race, which is... Um, a man on skis below behind the horse as well <laughs> yeah. and that, we prepare for that in Germany go to Christian Yard and, and we have somebody on the horse and somebody on rollerblades behind believe it or not in long range so it is a bit humorous but it's serious it's very prestigious and, sure. and for, and, and for it's valuable as well isn't it the big race is worth more than their derby it's a prestigious meeting and I would any of your viewers as a social occasion it's wonderful and, and you can have a weekend away there and enjoy it and, and, and that's why Midland Park are, are involved and, and we'll take probably two to five horses and, and we'll make sure our owners have a great time. If I was to come back here in, say, three, five years' time, what Probably would you... <laughs> <laughs> I seriously doubt that. Maybe one or two owners <laughs> might wish me that way. <laughs> uh, if I was to come back then, what would you have, in an ideal world, loved to have achieved? Look, when we had our trouble before, we were in seventh place in the championship. It was early in the season. I think the previous season we'd finished 22nd out of whatever it is, 600. It's become a bit of a chalice around the neck hasn't it because it's like about proving yourself again isn't it so so I'm competitive and I look we're in the top 20 now just I think about 18th or 19th or something like that that's going to be difficult to maintain with the stock we have but we're trying to drive forward and I'd like to think we get into the top 10 and then, then it's hard isn't it because um you, you you know it's about the stock you have you know you're buying these young horses a production line of nice young horses but hopefully we'll attract one or two more new owners if anybody comes here sees Everton I'd rather they think they don't like me but I'm a good trainer than think I'm a lovely fellow but can't train so it's important that we do a good job but we try and give owners a great time as well well when you come here you're in Enthusiasm is just infectious. I mean, if I had enough money, I'd love to have a horse with you. You rich I think... have one. <laughs> I'm disappointed I haven't sold you one yet. <laughs> well, we're not, we're not done yet, so you've still got time. Uh, but no, it's just the kind of place that when you come here, all you want to do really is to have a horse with you and to be able to see it right. run. Particularly because you say you plan each horse for each race, and that makes a massive difference. Uh, there will be owners that have been with me for 20 years. I say I'm a stubborn old bugger, you see. So I but we're all different, aren't we? So they become friends, don't they? And they trust me. So occasionally we'll have an owner and I know it's not going to work and I'd rather say, listen, you and I, it's not going to work. Yeah. But that's best for them as well, isn't Honestly, it? Honestly, the best policy. Because we, we try, I don't, what went on before, I was accused also. And what I won't do is mislead. Uh, they can't come to me and say, I, I did this. We're straightforward to deal with. We're, we're trying to run a business. We need to make it commercially work because that's important. Not so we can drive a Rolls Royce, so we can make sure everything's done properly here and we can progress. Next up on our tour of the West Country, we head to Venetia Williams's in Herefordshire, where she hosted a charity morning in aid of St Michael's Hospice. 60 guests will be taking part in some fun-filled activities and getting up close and personal with the horses in the hope of raising money for charity. Venetia, obviously we're here to see your lovely horse this morning, but also it's the St Michael's Hospice charity morning. Uh, how excited are you for this morning and um, how did it come about? Well, I was approached by um, uh, Simon Kershaw, who, who's fundraiser for, for that. And he's actually, um, in, in the past, he's worked at um, Hereford Racecourse, actually, for Art Racecourse and um, at Newmarket. So obviously he's got um, great interest in racing and, and he approached me and uh, I thought it was a great idea. Um, the, the hospice is, is, a, is a charity that we all try to support in this area. Um, you know, if we don't know anybody who's been there, we know friends who, who've got relations that have been there. And, uh, you know, we hope to raise some good funds for them. It's a very exciting day for us. It is the first ever open morning that St Michael's have uh, had the privilege of holding. And here we are at the home of Venetia Williams. I mean, we, we are spoilt rotten. Obviously, uh, Herefordshire is blessed with a plethora of uh, jump trainers, top jump trainers. Um, and given my sort of racing background, a few sort of telephone calls and here we are sort of a few months later with the event actually happening and uh, very excited to be here. And they've got some lovely horses to come and see. Royal Pagai obviously recently running second in the Betfair Chase. For racing fans, it's a perfect place to come, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yeah, I mean, obviously the history that goes behind sort of Anisha, I think she's sort of finished in the top 10 sort of trainers year after year for as long as I can remember. And obviously, I think this season's stock is no exception. Lots of exciting prospects to look forward to. So these guests here today, they really are going to get sort of a nice sneak preview of the season ahead, which uh, I think would be very exciting. For them. Well, 
when they've worked, they'll always trot back down. Um, it's, part, it's an important part of the warming down process is to, to keep them moving. You know, the temptation when you get to the top of the gallop, especially if they've done a piece of work, is to pull up and walk. But no, it's important to, for them to trot, keep, keep, keep them moving so they'll trot all the way back down. I think it's important to have sufficient distance between your fences um, so that the stride pattern varies. You've got to make the horse think for himself, so you've got to have it so that the stride pattern um, varies, so he's got to organise himself. We do have uh, the first ever St Michael's Dash, which we've not seen before. Uh, not for four-legged animals, but uh, for wheelbarrows. Uh, so yes, it's a little bit left field, uh, and we're hoping that we don't blot our copybook here as uh, we've come to sort of uh, <laughs> rely on Venetia's hospitality. Were you not persuaded to try and get involved as well? Or? <laughs> I, I was thinking I was going to have to actually, but I, I've, I've delegated um, my, my, my riding position to um, my assistant trainer, John Martin, who's um, much more able to do that sort of thing. We have uh, the uh, two wheelbarrows representing St Michael's, two wheelbarrows representing Venetia's Yard, and may the best team win. Runners and riders have paraded for the inaugural edition of the St Michael's Dash Wheelbarrow Race. Here we go. Okay, one, two, three! I think Venetia just whispered to me this is akin to how she felt when winning the Grand National with Monmo. So obviously a massive moment in her life. Well let's call upon um, John Martin and his precious cargo to come forward and collect the inaugural trophy of the St Michael Dash. <laughs> Venetia, on behalf of everybody here today, can I thank you for giving up your time and just being a great sport and a massive supporter of St Michael. Thank you so much. It is all about St Michael's Hospice at the end of the day. Dig deep into your pockets in a minute and hopefully uh, we'll have a good auction. 6.20, have another one, sir. 6.50, 6.50. 6 at 6.50, you've been a great help, but don't lose out all the time. At 800, at 800, then all sold and finished. Evie and Richard here, after winning in the auction. Uh, Evie, what did you just win? Um, what did I win? I won a table for two at the Panoramic Restaurant at Cheltenham Racecourse. Very so nice. very excited. Very, very good. Richard? And we won uh, two shares in a very nice racehorse. Is this the first horse you've ever had a, a share in? Yes. Oh, that's quite exciting, yes, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Very exciting. We'll so see what happens. with two of your friends or just whoever comes along? Just whoever comes along. Very good. Yeah. I've been coming to this establishment for the last 55 years, I think. Uh, I did a lot of work for her granddad, Captain Percival. There was a character. Marvellous. And of course, he did it all up. This was a, an absolute shambles when he came here from Cornwall to Devon. It's beautiful now, isn't oh, it? Oh, isn't it lovely? Yeah, amazing. I watched it grow. <laughs> and what a good job she's doing, yeah? Fantastic. Nick joins us now after a fabulous morning of Venetia Williams. I know you've got a particularly close bond with St Michael's, haven't you? Yeah, and, and, I, and I'd like to say this uh, because I think it's very important. Uh, I mean, I have stage four cancer. Uh, and I've been living with, uh, it's, it's a very rare condition called thinoma uh, that not many people know about. Uh, but the hospice has been um, an absolute godsend to me um, because I go there uh, for palliative pain management. Um, I mean, obviously, they can't get rid of my tumours, but in, in learning to live with the pain that they generate, the hospice has just given me a quality of life that I couldn't have imagined uh, you know prior to going there hospices are not all about death and dying uh, they they do that and they do a fantastic job to allow people to pass with dignity uh, but for those people um, you know coming you know living with a, a terminal disease they offer remarkable services you know it's all free as well um, so that's why when they say to me can you I go hey not, not a problem you know I owe you big time That's it for the latest edition of This Racing Live. I hope you've all enjoyed it as much as this fella behind me. Next week's episode will be coming from Wales. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>